Hello, my name is Alina Alp, and I have the pleasure and privilege to introduce a technique developed in our research group at Tulane University, New Orleans, Louisiana, US. Um, this is automatic continuous online monitoring of polymerization reactions, ACOM, and I'll be talking today about its principles and applications. Um, in order to have our work done in a more organized fashion, a few years ago, we have founded a non-profit center for polymer reaction monitoring and characterization, PolyRMC. We focus here on industrially relevant uh, R&D and problem solving, on advanced characterization, and, but also on monitoring control and fundamental and applied research. Why is important to monitor polymerization reactions? First, because it allows fundamental studies of reaction kinetics and mechanisms. Uh, it allows optimization of reactions at bench and pilot plant levels. At full scale, feedback control of industrial reactors, more efficient use of energy, natural resources, plant and labor, higher quality products. As you know, energy consumption uh, it's a big issue uh, in polymer industry, and uh, this is a major consum consumer of non-renewable resources. Um, it is an ideal target for efficiency gains to reduce overall energy consumption and dependence on foreign oil. Uh, the table below shows the energy consumption in the polymer manufacturing sectors in the US, and you can see it's pretty high. Uh, this is why it is important to know as much as possible about the processes monitored and about the characteristics of the end products. The uh, important characteristics of the polymers we um, focus on are molecular weight distributions and averages, dimensions, static and hydrodynamic, intrinsic viscosity, branching, aggregated microgel fraction of polymer, charge polymer linear density, copolymer composition, and stimuli responsiveness of polymers. Uh, important processes during the reactions. Well, first of all, kinetics, uh, conversion of the comonomers, evolution of molecular weight distribution, evolution of the intrinsic viscosity, uh, properties of the charged polymers, composition drift and distribution, but also unexpected problems such as premature reaction termination or microgelation or exothermic effects. An important field we go through is heterogeneous phase uh, reactions. And here we look into uh, changes in phase and for example, partitioning. Uh, another uh, process is um, stimuli responsiveness of polymers that we follow. Types of polymerization reactions, uh, chain growth polymerization, uh, free radical, control radical, anionic, cationic. The table on the right shows the main difference between the step growth reaction and chain growth. I won't go through since everybody's familiarized with it. Step, step growth polymerization is an important uh, type of reaction used, especially in the case of polyesters, polyurethane, but also biopolymers. Uh, Post-polymerization modifications such as hydrolysis, pegylation, quaternization, sulfonation. Um, chain growth reactions, well, as you all know, in free radical polymerization, individual chains are initiated, they propagate and terminate in the order of milliseconds, whereas the reaction that converts all monomer to polymer can last hours. Uh, I'll go very briefly to the steps of these reactions, initiation, uh, which co is composed by uh, a first step of initiator decomposition, followed by the diffusion control production of the first monomer radical. Propagation is the producing of the polymer chain, and the last step, termination, either by disproportionation or recombination. A, a different type of chain growth reaction is the control free radical polymerization. Here, most radicals are uh, thermoreversibly capped and do not propagate, so they are in a dormant state. Uh, actively propagating radicals population, hence, is low and there is very little termination. 
when all the monomer is used, more monomer can be added later and the reaction will then resume. This is why it's called leaving. Uh, CRP includes uh, different types of uh, reactions. The main ones that I list here are atom transfer radical polymerization, reversible addition fragmentation chain transfer, and nitroxide mediated polymerization. Another type of polymerization reaction mentioned before is the step growth. Here there are two more two or more monomer units that can add to each other when in chains of arbitrary length. This leads to second order reaction kinetics and the continuously evolving mass distribution. As you can see in the uh, graph on the right, uh, here is shown the degree of polymerization as function of conversion for a step growth reaction. And one can see that the reaction needs to a high to reach high level of conversion in order to have um, high molecular weight polymer. Another type of um, uh, direction we, uh, I will be talking about will be heterogeneous phase polymerization. In contrast to the homogeneous phase, which is done in solvent or in bulk, the heterogeneous phase includes um, either oil in water reactions or water in oil phase reactions of different types of uh, dispersion, suspension, free dice bed, bed type of reaction. An uh, example shown in the figure to the right is an emulsion polymerization, which allows uh, high molecular weight polymers to be obtained with low viscosity. This, all these reactions could be done in batch or in semi-batch or in continuous reactors. And uh, in the table uh, in this slide is shown that are shown differences be among these types of uh, reactors. Batch reactor offers very little control over the reaction. The volume is constant during the reaction. In the semi-batch reactor, more control is allowed uh, by different uh, uh, flow schemes. In continuous reactor, a uh, steady state is achieved and continuously produces polymer. The volume is constant. Uh, all these allow different polymer architectures to be produced. Uh, we could have branched or starred or comb or dendrimer type of polymers. Uh, there are also different type of uh, copolymers may depending on the different ways the monomers get incorporated in the copolymer chains. And thus, we could have alternating copolymers, random copolymers, gradient copolymers, or deadlock. 